know Matt and the next few vlogs for the next few weeks will be sick because there's no school for the next couple of weeks. Everybody calm down. It's a party. It's a party. Yeah. I'm never doing that again. Alright, so we've got two weeks off. Great. It's April 2nd, Max. I forgot to say that. Um, you never say a date, but I always do say a date because I take the vlog brothers all the way through. So, um, I'm going to say that now. So, it was the last day of the sun today, and I'm not an absolute sure you knew that. Uh, uh, so, sick. Yes. Um, the next few vlogs will be pretty decent, I think. Apart from this one, because I already know a lot about it. Speaking of my videos, my punishment, uh, if my throat clears up, has been doubled. Because I haven't got it out in three weeks, so I'm now doubling my punishment. It will be out by the end of the Easter holidays. Uh, most likely be out like Saturday. I might go out tomorrow and re try and find it. I can't find it uh, in the library, but I'll try and find it in a chat shop somewhere. So it'll be out by. Saturday, is, by the latest Wednesday, but by the latest, very latest, should be out by the end of these holidays. But I'll try and get out earlier. It's been double now. I need to read 20 pages of Hidden Shades of Grey, and I need to do two spoonfuls of cinnamon. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty much murder for me. So, Matt, I don't know if you've seen, but I've changed my Facebook profile picture now. I made this myself, uh, it's a bit of a joke. Um, I'll show it to you right now. Alright, if you get this, um, I'll put it here, right here, I think you can see it, uh, this is Pablo Mills from Viva 12, and underneath it, it says, uh, so along the lines of, this is what I feel about Viva 12, and here's Pablo Mills from Viva 15, and this is what I think of Viva 15. I made that myself, I just love it. I got that idea because I saw a footage comment with Papa Mills for FIFA 12 and FIFA 13, they're completely different. Like, one's yelling and one of them's um, smiling, and I thought, oh, I might as well put a song without FIFA 12, FIFA 15 comparison, so, yeah. Okay, right, Matt, I'm going to go on to the review of the next three episodes of Doctor Who in just a minute. First of all, I'm going to say, though, your vlog is coming on Easter, your Sunday vlog. Now, um,. A couple of rules I want you to follow with this. Never, ever put a scroll at the end saying thanks for watching. We don't say thanks for watching, we'll say see you tomorrow. Or see you on Thursday as it will be, so never put that in. And seeing as it's Easter, I want your Sunday vlog to be good. Just tell you for your Easter Sunday, just do that. Okay, so now we move on to the second volume of Doctor Who DVDs. This will be the last week of Doctor Who episodes. Next week, I don't know what movie I'm going to review, so I'm going to do a review of this DVD. Okay, so episode one Aliens of London are so called. Okay, you're right, the Sardine are these big two foot, two foot, two meter monsters, not eight foot, I don't know. They're tall monsters who hide in humans for disguise. They landed on Earth, they've taken over the government, and they're building up their power in the government so they can take over the Earth. And they, um, launch like a conspiracy and to kill the Prime Minister and then get take him over and stuff. It's a really complicated storyline that does suspend your disbelief for a bit. So the Doctor and Rose go back but they don't know there's a conspiracy going on but they do get back one year after she left which I really think is weird. I don't really like this. Okay the first episode took place in 2005 I think the fourth episode took place in 2006, I think. So, the time period doesn't really match up there. Uh, she's been gone for a year rather than 12 hours. 12 months rather than 12 hours, what the doctor said. And she just walks in and everyone's freaking out. I personally don't really like this because it really suspends your disbelief. If she's been gone for that long, and she doesn't even know she's been gone for that long, you take her into a mental hospital. And uh, I don't really like the fact she's been gone for that long. But it, it's actually forgotten about in the space of literally half the episode. So they're back and they're settled in nicely and the Dean of Doctor's settling a bit nicely. But then the Sedine land. Or again, or for the first time. So there's this scene in which they blast through Big Ben and land in the river Thames. I love that scene. 
Um, it's a pretty iconic scene. And then the Doctor's brought in this thing, a Dissidian conspiracy, and then the government's been taken over by the Dissidian as well, from within, who hide inside the human bodies, who have a weird comic relief of farting, which I hate. I used to love, but I hate it now. And there's a genuine threat then at the end, because there's the Doctor and Rose, uh, who are both in danger, and Rose's mum is also in danger. It ends on a cliffhanger with Celine and stuff. Uh, yeah, it ends on a cliffhanger, the episode. I like the settling part. I might sound like I hate this episode, but I actually like them all settling in and all. There's a bit of comedy going on, and I like comedy and TV and this kind of stuff, just to take you out of it, but not child comedy like fighting. I also like the Celine design. Um, I just, I just like it. It's, I don't know what it's about, but I just like the studying design and how they, you know, hide in the human bodies. That's pretty cool. So overall, apart from a few suspension of disbelief fits, I would give this episode a six out of ten. Not, not amazing, but it's okay. Okay, next episode, World War Three, follows right on from the last one, and it is um, then getting out of danger and dwarfing the city's plans to. Uh, launch a nuclear weapons against a scene in the air, but they're not in the air, so instead, uh, the story's pretty confusing, so I just say it's and try to take over. So the Doctor tries to stop them, and he gets out of danger, and Jackie gets out of danger, and so is Rose and that, and they end up being stuck in his chamber for like half the episode, and then Rose's boyfriend, Mickey, needs to be ill. I've already talked about him last week. Um, so he needs to launch nuclear missiles against Sadine to Downing Street, and he succeeds. Um, no spoiler there, but nah. This episode is a lot less focused on child humour, there's a lot less fighting in this, which I like. Um, there's a genuine bit of tension in it because uh, the Doctor talks to Rose as well, saying she might not make it out of this alive. And, for a kind of a comedy related episode last week, this week is pretty dark, you know. But it wasn't dark in the sense of the Unquiet Dead. It was actually, you know, tension and stuff. There's also a one on one confrontation with Sazine, with Jackie and um, Rose Mumlays, and Mickey, and that was pretty cool. And how they defeated them. A bit child humour, but I still love it. Um, and there's still a special disbelief in why did the fat people take over the government? No one noticed that, and uh, I don't. Either. There's still a bunch of disbelief, but it's a lot less prominent. There's a lot more action tension in this episode, which brings it up a rating. I'm going to give World War 3 a 7 out of 10. Quick review. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the episode I was waiting for uh, 10 years ago Dalek. It's called that, Dalek. It's like, uh, what can we think of? Hmm. The villain in the episode is a Dalek. Uh, what could we call it? Daleks are back? Dalek rising? Dalek? Uh, yeah, just Dalek. Uh, you see, when you say Dalek enough times, I like garlic. So, uh, yeah, there's this Dalek being kept in the museum. The Doctor and Rose go into the museum to investigate stuff. This happens in the... Oh, by the way, this episode is set in the future. It is set in the unbelievably futuristic society of 2012. They said by 2012 they'd have like underground stuff and um, computers that like acted as like x-rays and stuff like real futuristic stuff. <laughs> this is only seven years in the future from 2005 so either way they go back to the museum and they find a Dalek there who is the Doctor's biggest enemy uh, and they get in a conversation. The Dalek ends up murdering a lot of people and the um, Doctor ends up uh, stopping it kind of. But the thing about this episode is it is dark. It There's no comedy in it really at all. Oh, shit. Because there's already, I'm running out of battery in my computer. On my, yeah, I'm running out of battery in my camera so I've got to get stuff. Okay, there's not a lot of comedy. It's very dark. Very dark. So, uh, dark ends of murdering a lot of people. And then there's Rose Rose gets it out and then Doctor, you know. So there's a lot more tension there. A lot of tension. Darkness is in our place. So, uh, I've got to get uh, vlog done quickly. So, I have to say, episode's dark, um, tension, a lot of build-up, um, Daleks are 
pretty decent villain. You feel for Rose, you feel like he's going to kill Rose, so that's it. I'll give this episode overall 8 out of 10. Not as good as Underworld, but still pretty good. Okay, right, Matt, I need to get this done quickly, so I'll see you tomorrow. And in my vlog, good Friday, see you then.